Next week, the Chaos Crew are out on the road again, and I believe one of our furthest trips away yet for CTEC Plus and Chaos. Yes, we are off to the London Borough of Hillingdon. <clears throat> the borough is in the West London and probably most famous for being the home of Heathrow Airport. Also, did you know that James Corden, Ronnie Wood and former England football manager Glenn Hoddle were all born in Hillingdon? No, I'm not that smart, sadly. I have got that in front of me. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. A bit of celeb gossip for you there. Love to see it. Love to see it. And we are really, really pleased to be joined by Elaine King. So she's an integration manager for with CTEC plus Hillingdon. And she's not just an integration manager, as next week she's also going to be a Chaos TV co-presenter Glenn oh no went to start talking about your one and for the Hillingdon Feeling Good event welcome Elaine how are you doing today hello Elaine a bit nervous but I'm great thank you well you're gonna have to get used to it now aren't you if you're gonna be doing that <laughs> I think so yes it's been a long time I haven't done anything like this <laughs> that's so exciting though isn't it there's so much to do so Elaine could you tell us a little bit more about your role and, and what that involves Oh, where do I start? Um, when I joined um, CTEC Plus, that was just in June last year, I was told by my director, operations director, it's a blank canvas, just make it work. Um, so I'm, I don't really know London in terms of that side, Hillingdon at all. I'm technically from Birmingham. So the first thing I did is, you know, I thought, let me do some research. Let me look at the demographics, the labour market. Let's look at trends. Let's look at the social issue. And then I started to realise it was a wonderful, diverse um, location. Um, there are 22 wards in, 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 in Hillingdon, which is huge, 309,000 uh, residents. So I'm thinking, OK, now where do I go from here? So I started to develop like a database with all of my businesses, uh, my voluntary organisations. And I started to actually do something in 2021, which is when it, to reach out to them face to face with precautions, of course, because, you know, the pandemic, et cetera, was all on. And um, they were really glad to see me. And one of the things I did is spend a lot of time talking to all of the different business, the voluntary organizations. And I did a lot of listening to find out what it is that they wanted to do. And so what I do, what I did then is just to get to know them. And I figured, well, I started to understand Hillingdon, what the challenges were, I figured, well, how can I connect CTEC Plus as a brand? Because we have a great brand, even if I say so myself. <laughs> it's a wonderful company to work with. They're knowledgeable, they have experience, and it's a national company, so they have a national reach. So this is where I touched base with my marketing. And as you know, we have a fantastic marketing department with Geraldine and Beth, really knowledgeable people. And um, we put our heads together. At first, I was playing with the concept of like a love affair with the community. How do I build collaboration? How do I integrate within the community? So I started to play around on that phrase. And then marketing came up with feeling good. And then I said, yes, a community affair. So we brought those two things together. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing next week is going into the community, talking to the community, inviting them to, to come to this live um, broadcast and just to find out more about uh, about Hillingdon. Um, so that's my canvas I would like to bring live on, on Friday next week. Amazing. I mean, what what an introduction! Um, and to hit the a ground mouthful, running, sorry. <laughs> that's fine. And to Great. hit the ground running as well with the with the blank canvas, like you said, you had um, mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. You've got to have that sort of motivation, haven't you? Doing this kind of thing, really powerful, really, really powerful, and exciting. Mm. Exciting. Now, as we and said, I, the and I love it. Oh. Because, I'm sorry, because no, I, I love to. I love to talk. So that <laughs> that is so good in terms of what I do with my community. So I think it was um, two peas in the pod, me and the community. Amazing. Well, as, as you just said, and we said in the introduction as well, Chaos TV are heading up to your neck of the woods next Friday, broadcasting the Hillingdon Feeling Good event uh, from the CTEC Plus offices. You've talked a little bit about what's to come. Could you give us a little bit more detail what's to expect for people? Well, essentially to know that CTEC Plus is there in Hillingdon. I don't think a lot of people, because we're new to the area, they would know of us because of our wonderful website, but they didn't know we we're located in C Plus uh, um, in Hillingdon. And to talk about, you know, what we're there to do. 
also to share some good news stories from our participants um, as well as our some of our staff to talk about what we do in terms of training and developing our participants and their journey, share some good news story into work. Um, would also have the opportunity to hear from one of our local MP, um, Councillor John MacDonald, and share his thoughts about Hillingdon, employability and everything else he wants to talk about. So I'm quite looking forward to that. And um, one of the great things that I don't think a lot of people are aware of the on June the 25th, um, it's a special celebration for the armed forces and Hillingdon has the largest number of serving armed forces personnel um, of all of the London boroughs. So there's over wow. 800 service people and families based in Hillingdon. I didn't even know that until I got to work with the people in Hillingdon. And as you know, so technically the three armed forces are represented in Hillingdon. Um, so that's a wonderful opportunity. We're still knocking on the door of um, Sir Ray Puddyfoot, who's also the Air Force champion, and see if we can get him live to come on live and talk to us about that. But it's wonderful to know that this rich, diverse um, culture and armed forces and everything else resides right in the heart of Hillingdon. So that's what they're going to be looking forward to hear and discuss as well. Oh, amazing. So good. That is just, and it's great to hear that you've been kind of connecting with all the local people because sometimes I feel like you can hear from charities about what they do or just, just groups of people about what they do and things, but you don't get to hear directly about the people all the time, do you? So no. how exciting is it that you get to, you know, I would never really have known good. that Hillingdon had the biggest armed yeah that's that's forces. quite a number yeah it is huge and you know these are service people who's done so much for the country and there's so many unsung heroes um and it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to know and it's education as well i mean i didn't know anything like that until i did the research so i'm really looking forward to giving that a push um, as well as speaking to our training providers, our special um, specialist providers, those people who help us with our participants um, with their journey into work. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, quite a few personalities we're hoping to showcase as well. Amazing. So you mentioned that Hillingdon is a, is a relatively new area for CTEC Plus. What would you say that are some of the challenges that are faced within this community? I'm going to pick on three key areas uh, for challenges and 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 the reason why I'm going to name these three um, is the feedback that I've got that I've received from the businesses, the voluntary organizations, training providers. And one of them is funding, um, the reduced availability of funding and the feeling that because Although Hillingdon is part of London, they are the outermost part of London. So they feel like the inner London receive more of the funding. Um, that's one thing in terms of funding. Another area of, of concern, I would say, is back in the day when the government gave the different organisation, they gave them grants and you would get X amount of thousands of pounds over a period of time. So now it's all about contract. So they have shifted the risk of the provider, um, the sh shifted the risk to the provider, and it's all about payment by results. So a lot of the um, voluntary organization training providers, they feel pressure to act as a business to generate income and take on contracts while their workforce oftentimes are from volunteering and therefore they're maintaining that third sector principle and ethos of caring and nurturing but yet the contracts are all about development payment by results showing proof of performance so the funding aspect is really critical and of concern to a lot of the people that i've integrated with the second thing is healthcare. um the local authority there they they are really trying to do great job in terms of providing for uh a lot of baby boomers like myself um, and so there's an aging population, as you can appreciate, and it goes back for, as I said, the veterans that from the war, 
a lot of them are now, you know, maturing. So they have that to be um, mindful of. And so they've come up with a uh, like over the next five years up until 20 from 20 to 2025, looking at how they can provide for the elderly population. Um, the, a lot of the research research have shown that the mortality rate is much higher as compared to the other parts of London. The, the cancer diagnosis or diagnosing cancer this, uh, at, in the early stages, it's lower. Physical activity among the older um, population in Hill Hillingdon seems to be lower and um, they have higher incidences of tuberculosis and things like that. So therefore, they've put together and um, an organisation which is the Hillingdon Health um, Care Practitioners. So the GP Confederation, as well as the National um, NHS Foundation Trust to look at ways of improving the health of the residents within Hillingdon. So health care is an issue and very important and very high on the agenda of the local authority. And the other one, um, I think, speaks for a, a lot of London and outside of London throughout England, which is housing is of, of major concern to the Hillingdon area. And because of um, COVID, which has perpetuated the situation where there's a lot of disruption within the housing market. So there's been delayed development, um, postponed eviction, um, as you can see with huge responses being brought into with rough sleepers on the street. They're, they're seeing more of that. They're also seeing a lot of people falling into difficulty with employment. Therefore, you've got increased debt, you've got rent arrears. And so they're, they're feeling tension and the tension is being brought to the surface in some of the areas. And as you can imagine, for some of the residents, mental health is also another challenge that is creeping in more and more. And because of COVID as well, they saw increases in domestic abuse. So there's a lot happening. The local authority, the national health system, they and the GP federation, they're all coming together and putting to and they've put together a plan of how to better care for the housing, for health care, and then the other issue of funding. So those would be the three key areas of concern that I've managed to glean so far for Hillingdon. Fantastic. You explain things so well and so in depth. It's mm. it's lovely to hear, especially on such hard hitting shops there, yeah, hard hitting subjects as well. Yeah, I couldn't believe about the healthcare, but I mean it's incredible that they've created their own yeah. sort of solution to that, isn't it? You know, they've almost yeah. got their own kind of sometimes society you've got, mini. Sometimes you've got to take hand, matters in your own hands, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now we, you mentioned uh, a lot about obviously the the rich diverse culture uh, in Hillingdon, which is fantastic. Um, there's many organisations that uh, have sprung up to support diversity. Could you tell us about some of these? Um, there's a lot happening in terms of diversity in Hillingdon. Um, I think a, a, a lot of what I have researched. My background is also marketing and research, and I found it very exciting to know that these things are there by doing the research, but actually going into the community. And it's surprising the amount of people who were just eager to talk and to realize there's a company like CTEC Plus in Hillingdon willing to listen to them. And these are small organizations. We have spoken to people from the Asian Women um, Association. They're doing a lot um, of activities for their um, culture. And one of the things I need to prefix this by saying that my research also sh showed that the, the, the changing is happening in terms of the demographics. Um, the last statistical information 2020 shows that it's 49.8% of the BAME background, Black, um, Asian and minority. So it's like a 50-50. And this is where you're getting the rich cultural diversity coming forward. Um, I've actually met um, leaders of the Somalian, uh, West London Somalian group and the, the exceptional work that they're doing in Hillingdon. 
Um, they also have organizations that deal with refugees, um, because one of the things that was brought to my attention was that quite a few of the refugees are being placed in Hillingdon, and therefore the whole console, um, concept of ESOL that is needed, um, work, um, housing, everything, health care, everything we talked about is now becoming on a bigger scale because they now have to also take care of refugees coming in who are also finding a very welcoming, rich, diverse culture within Hillingdon. And I actually can go on and on and on about the different <laughs> organizations, the food banks, they're doing fantastic work. They're the Salvation Army. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with a couple of people from the Salvation Army and they have their own employability arm of what they do, helping refugees, helping people find work, signposting them to other organizations that can help them. And so there's a lot happening in Hillingdon. And I, 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 I myself, I, um, it's an eye opener for, for me to see the amount of organizations that work collaboratively together to make sure that the residents of Hillingdon are helped in the most meaningful way. Mm. Amazing. I love this. It's really, it's kind of moving in, in a way, isn't it? Just hearing about all these people. I love hearing the passion from yourself, Elaine, about this, yeah. actually. It shows how much you, you care as personally about all this as well. It really yeah. is lovely to hear. So as part yeah. of this event, you're, you are aiming to promote the restart scheme mm. in Hillingdon. Could you tell us a little bit about the kind of support people can expect from this scheme? Well, I'm going to share with you um, feedback and observations from my office, which is the where we're located in Uxbridge on Belmont Road. It's the old um, Job Centre Plus building, believe it or not, beautifully renovated. And participants coming into that building, the first experience they have is a bit of a wow factor because it's such a beautiful building um, with a concierge, um, they're, then they're escorted up to the third floor. This is where CTEC Plus is located. And uh, we have lovely offices and we greet them in a manner. And we remember first and foremost that they are human beings first. They need our help. Um, we also specialize um, in terms of supporting um, health and well-being. So there's the employability aspects of what we do as well as the health and well-being. So they will be greeted with empathetic and caring advisors who fully who are fully trained to listen first and foremost, and understand their needs. So they're not walking into training and this is what you're going to get. We're going to spend time doing what we call our initial assessment and understanding what they expect and what they need from the training and how best we can help them. As we say, we also have um, specialized health and well-being coaches and we offer um, support. Um, and if need be, signposts out to um, other special provision organizations that can give them more tailored, more specialized support in getting them ready to go into employment. Um, we also have special providers um, um, like um, provisions like um, debt counselling, housing counselling and healthcare, which are the three key things I mentioned to you um, earlier, as well as um, alcohol recovery, um, support and assistance. And um, we also believe um, have access to Uxbridge College. There's a guy, I'm going to call his name Giles, um, a wonderful guy um, that I met who's given me so much guidance, knowledge and assistance. Um, and they at Uxbridge um, College offer and assist us with our upskilling and in the different courses, vocational training. Um, we also have partners that offer ESOL, provide functional um, training in English and maths. So as you can appreciate, um, we're working as a collaborative team in terms of developing our participants. So on the Restart programme, we offer the internal confidence building, the CV writing, um, interview technique, the coaching, even in-work support. But we also have a cadre of um, provisions, special provisions that helps build our uh, participants on their journey into work and supporting them in work as well. 
Fantastic. That is, wow. Just I mean, wow. It, it, what I loved hearing about was how, how you make it a personal experience for each person yeah. because it just, it makes it so much more human. And I think sometimes you really can, some things can be just so cold, mm. can't they? But that sounds like a really warming, comforting space that you've created, which I think, especially for people doing like a restart of everything, if it's what you're they need. nervous or anxious, which I can imagine a lot of people doing this kind Absolutely. of thing are, the last thing you want to be is, boom, barrage of information that you have to now immediately yeah. take in. You want to be yeah. made to feel comfortable. So it's a, little, it's a bit of an easier process. Mm. And it makes it better for them to go out into the world again and do yeah. what they want to do. Help with the CV as well. That can be scary for so many people. Very, very just much. Just writing that and they get help. It's great. Now, this isn't Absolutely. just... Sorry, you, you go for it. No, I was just also saying, but they also educate us, each and every one of our participants. They enrich our lives as well. They also, we also, as I said, we are trained to listen and be empathetic and caring. So we learn and we glean a lot from them and the things they need to help them on their journey into work. So it's also rich to learn. So we give, but we also receive as, as, as well from our participants. Fantastic. Now, obviously, as you've very, made very obvious already, this event isn't just about getting people back into work. Part of that journey is also feeling good about your health and well-being. Um, can you tell us some about some of the services that are available in Hillingdon that can help with mental health and well-being? Well, we work with an organisation called Mind, um, and they deal with the more specialised aspect of what we do because we do um, have our own health and well-being support program, um, which lasts for you know sixteen weeks, and um, we take care of them while they're with, with us. So they start off within a three day of being referred to us. They have like a 30 minute um, introductory appointment. This is where we do all the fact finding, finding out all about what their needs are, how best we can help them. And then within like 10 days or so, we can refer them to and uh, to, to attend face to face um, initial health and well-being sessions. And we also have two wonderful workshops. Um, um, the first one is our health and wellness group workshop. And that occurs like every two weeks um, at Uxbridge office, uh, at our Uxbridge office. And that occurs on Wednesdays between 11 and 11.30. And we deal with issues and topics like food and mood, because as you know, good nutrition is critical to our mood as well. Activity and movement, managing stress, sleep, developing resilience and well-being. So that's a really helpful um, workshop. We have another support group, which is our peer-to-peer -peer support group, and that appear, um, occurs every two weeks at our office as well. And we offer participants the opportunity to get together as a group. So you have like a group of like-minding people sharing and it's a non-threatening environment. And as you know, from in terms of learning anyway, peer-to-peer -peer is also a very good um, tool for learning and to share and to bring people out of their shell. And you'd be surprised, the person that came in on day one that would sit in the corner and have hardly anything to say in week two, three, four or five, they actually say, we have friends. I look forward to going to this particular group because I can meet with my friends and we can talk about things that affect them both. So that's a very good um, uh, work group to, you know, support group to have. And it's done very informally over tea, coffee, biscuits, very kicked back and laid back. And it's all about chatting, interacting and really just having a good time with each other. That is just great, isn't so it? Good. And I really, you know, we really hope that it goes amazing, that it's successful, and that people again make friends. Because I mean, people get lonely, as we've learned with our new grant that we've got. Very lonely. Yeah, it's great. So great to see that things are happening with that. So now that we've kind of covered all the bases, would you like to tell everyone and the viewers how they can tune in, how they can watch this? Mm. Well, most definitely um, on Friday between eleven and um, two p.m. Um, we, you can watch on CTEC Plus and Plus Facebook, um, or they can go directly to watchchaos.tv and um, watchchaos.tv. And um, I, 
you know, it's going to be a wonderful opportunity. And I also think that they can also take the opportunity to make contact with C you know, myself at CTEC Plus in terms of any of the organizations. I'm more than happy to reach out to assist wherever I can in informing those partnership and collaborative um, events, because this is only the start of what I hope will continue in terms of the different types of event that we'd like to put forward in Hillingdon. Fantastic. Amazing. I like that. You've, you've got good big plans for this and obviously the road ahead. Elaine, it's been lovely uh, ca chatting with you and hopefully we can have you on in future. I keep a massive fingers crossed and hope everything goes well in the event <laughs> in Hillington. It sounds like you've got everything covered. You must yeah. be quite busy. I hope you're managing your stress well. <laughs> You know what? It's been very busy, but it's good stress. It's not bad stress. Oh, that's And great. I find that I am charged. I can feel the adrenaline going because I literally wake up every morning just to do a little bit more towards getting this event on the road. So I myself and the my support of my my staff and my my director um, and the marketing department, everybody's pulled together so wonderfully to make this a reality. So I'm really looking forward to it. Elaine King, lovely to have you on the show. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. You're most welcome. And thank you so much. <laughs> have yourselves great days. You will too. Do. Bye. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Isn't she lovely? She was amazing. That was such incredible stuff as well. Like really. She's really done research into everything. Like, it, yeah. It's so much. Like, she, it feels like she's just paraphrase everything we do here at chaos yeah so for so, sure. so much yeah and so much more as well so right. again a big thank you to elaine King.